Hey everyone, Joey again, Turning Point Boatworks. Uh, this is um, sixth, seventh, I, I can't remember now, um, part of this series on how we build your kayak. Uh, what we have next to us right here is a petrol uh, that is built with the Basalt and Negra. Uh, this has pretty much been featured throughout the entire build series, so it's a, a pretty complete and comprehensive look at how we do things um, to build these, you know, awesome kayaks. And so today uh, we've actually got the boat in one piece. Um, so this is the first time you get to see like the whole for form of it. It's pretty exciting once we peel all the tape off um, and, you know, we get to see the lines of the boat. And this particular boat has been cut down for the paddler. It's a, it's a custom uh, to lower the uh, rear combing height uh, because he's a avid Greenland roller. Um, so we're able to do that because we do have a variable deck height system uh, in all of our kayaks so that we can cut them down uh, in order to, uh, you know, fit a wide variety of people. Uh, we can also pad them out uh, to fit the paddler as well. Uh, but this particular customer was concerned about his layback roll. So the obvious choice is to make that combing a little bit lower so that he can um, do it and, and you know, do his, his normal Greenland rolls like he always has in boats that were you know, pretty specific to rolling. So the difference is, is this design is going to do those things and be an awesome sea kayak in the, in, you know, as well. So, uh, so today uh, we're getting into seaming the kayak, the exterior seam. Interior seam is done. And as I said before, the interior seam is probably about mm, 70, 75% of the strength of the boat uh, if, as far as the seam. Um, and we're going to dress the outside up uh, and put a contrasting, of course, it's going to be black uh, seam on the, uh, you know, to cover up this, this joint. We have a variety, uh, there's a procedure that we go through in order to do this. And the first thing is, is we need to prepare the surface. Uh, and there's going to be, as you saw in the previous video, we use CA glue to affix the two together and hold it in position while the tape on the inside cured. Uh, so now we need to grind all that off. We need to make this surface smooth uh, so that the tape will lay nice and flat. Uh, and then we can go through our normal procedure there. And uh, in the um, upcoming portion of this video, I'm going to be using this, which is a air powered uh, belt sander. It's three quarters of an inch wide. I can be very, very precise uh, about this. It does a quick job of it, gets that uh, seam level. Uh, and the most important part, and this is something that I have a bit of a beef with, with other manufacturers, it prepares the surface so that the resin can stick. I have had way too many kayaks in here where they've had seam damage and we were able to peel the whole seam off because the surface below was not sanded and keyed so that the resin would actually stick to it. The bond was minimal at most and it was just pure decoration at that point. That's not what a seam is for. So we're gonna prepare the surface first by grinding the seam uh, where the two meet. We're gonna strike a line with some tape, tape off the, the area that we're going to seam and then ultimately come back and sand that area in where the, the tape is going to land so that the next layer, which is the reinforcing seam tape, can adhere with 100% strength. So stay tuned. We're going to just get right into it and start grinding the seam down. All right, before I get sanding, uh, I'm fully donned in my suit, gloves, eye protection, and also respirator we use because truthfully, basalt is one of the itchiest, itchiest fibers known to man. Uh, that stuff gets in your skin and I'll be feeling it for a couple days and it's just no fun. So I'm fully, fully protected from this to keep it off of my, my skin. And um, yeah, we're just gonna get into it and make a mess.
So I've gone through, I've ground the seam down uh, nice and flat. Um, this kind of another reason for that too is doing it before laying this tape because this allows this tape to lay nice and evenly on the surface and you don't get any kind of line undulations and with this going to be a black uh, seam you're going to notice every single wave in the in the uh, tape line uh, as soon as you pull it all off so uh, but anyway so everything's been been prepped as far as the seam is concerned as far as the joint excuse me uh, and this tape serves as you know a guide for when we mask off the deck and then the hull uh, this will be removed uh, and then we can move forward. I do like um, a balance in the thickness of the, the seams. Uh, a big one inch, it's hard to believe, but the difference in a, in a quarter of an inch in the seam really changes the appearance of the boat when you look at it uh, as, a, as a, whole, um, a whole structure. Um, the, the attributes of the petrol in particular has really really beautiful lines and to put a big old fat seam on it that's an inch you know inch wide uh, as most uh, seam tapes are, are, are an inch wide um, it just would take away from the beautiful lines so we use a thinner and this is kind of kind of funny because this is a basically three-quarter inch tape uh, that way we can reduce the size of that seam, the appearance of that seam, so it looks more of an accent than sort of a dominant feature. I don't like it to be a dominant feature. It needs to blend in with everything else. So that's why we use this particular size tape. Uh, we can go narrower if we need to, um, but uh, you know, on this particular boat, I think this uh, three-quarter inch seam will accentuate the long lines of it and it, this one because it is cut down a little bit it has a little bit more curve to the shear um, and it just is a sexy sexy uh, line you know set of lines on this boat so um, from here I'm gonna go ahead and just tape everything up get it prepared and uh, then we'll actually start applying the seam got the line all taped off now and this is going to basically define the lines of the boat so it's super important that this is all straight clean neat everything we can do and um, the guys at the uh, store that I buy my tape from this is automotive um, masking tape uh, used for automotive refinish um, really much higher quality and oddly enough it's cheaper than the stuff you buy at your big box home store uh, but much higher quality um, so I use a couple of different colors and the reason for that is is so that I can see my lines um, so using yellow green sometimes orange um, rarely the only time I use the blue is when I'm striking that line so I can see it and if it's a boat that's got a blue deck or something like that if it's not a really high contrast to the tape that I'm using then I might use a different color tape but the c different colors that I use are so that I can see what the heck I'm doing and because uh, this is such an important part of the, the process as far as the aesthetics of the boat uh, so I want this to be as, as neat and clean as possible. So uh, from here, uh, we're going to continue dressing the seam up and uh, then move on to the application of the fiber tape, uh, the seam tape that goes on it, uh, then gel coat, um, smoothing that out, and then a final spray of gel coat on the seam uh, to finish it all off. Uh, one thing too, and I, I wanted to go back to the tape for just a second, is you notice that you know there's several layers of tape here. Uh, the green gets peeled off multiple times, so that's why I use, you know, what I call the landing strip, which is the first piece of yellow tape that goes down. So that way I have something to tape the film to, and then finally the, the, the um, tape, the green tape here that actually sets the line 
uh, can be peeled off without peeling everything off. Um, because this happens, like I said, uh, we'll do it after we do the resin uh, and first coat of gel coat. If a second coat of gel coat is needed uh, to fill any, any kind of uh, abnormalities, we'll tape it up again and then we'll um, tape it up a final time to, in order to do the spray. And then once the spray is done, it's pulled off for the final, final uh, go round. So, all right, we're going to get into sanding the seam, getting it all cleaned up and, um, and then move on to the sticky stuff. All right, we're ready to move on to the next phase of seaming this kayak. Uh, the next phase is we're going to prep the surface uh, because there's shiny gel coat underneath of here um, that the resin is going to ad poorly adhere to unless we prep it. And we're going to go through and sand this, uh, this area in between these tape lines so that the, the uh, resin will have some, some, something to stick to. Um, I can't say how many times that you know, we've done repairs where there's been a seam and we've been able to pull the entire tape, tape off of the, the boat because the, this was not keyed in order to make that, uh, make that external seam bond properly. Um, it seems to be a very common practice in composite kayak making, uh, which I completely disagree with because it only takes you know, roughly around 10 minutes to go around and key this surface so that we get a good bond with the, uh, with the next application of resin and ultimately gel coat. So we're going to do, we're going to key the surface, uh, then I'm going to come back, uh, and then there are some little gaps um, that will need to be filled, and we'll do what we call a sweep of the surface with a thickened resin, and that thickened resin will f do, do two things. It will fill any kind of small gaps, uh, because that is an entry point for water to migrate. Uh, so we do not want that to, to possibly happen. Uh, so we'll sweep the surface with the thickened resin. The other part of it too is, is once it's on the surface, it's curing and we can lay the tape in that sticky resin and the, the tape will just stay right where it needs to be. We can wet out that tape. Then I'm going to peel off the, uh, the uh, masking tape and then we can move on into making it pretty with the thickened gel coat and ultimately spraying on the final gel coat on the, uh, on the seam. sweep uh, coat which fills the cracks anything that's in there that fills that creates a tacky surface for the tape to adhere to apply the fiberglass reinforcing tape then came through with the resin to wet out that tape pressed it in and removed any excess resin uh, with the, um, the uh, spreader which is the plastic spreader got rid of all of that and then I have done two applications around of gel coat just brushing it on the gel coat is thickened gel coat is a non uh, or it's a uh, excuse me a, it doesn't sag very easily uh, it is a thixotropic type of resin uh, tinted resin um, and it does not tend to sag when applied on a vertical surface uh, we've thickened it a bit so that we get more on the surface so it'll stay in place and ultimately be uh, fairly easy to, easy to sand. So right now I'm going to peel the tape off, reveal the, uh, re reveal the seam, and uh, we're just going to wait for it to cure and sand it, retape it, sand it, and then put it in the booth to spray on the final application of gel coat. So I think it's important to point out why we spray on that final application of gel coat. So when we thicken this gel coat, it does reduce the toughness of it. Um, it sands easily, it scratches easily, things like that. So by doing this in a two-step application where we get sand the surface smooth, and when we get a nice smooth surface, um, we don't have brush marks, things like that, that are in the gel coat. Uh, and then ultimately spraying on a unmodified 
gel coat over top of that gives you a you know full thickness um, tough gel coat on the seam so it's our belief you know especially on the keel strips it, it wears a little bit harder um, and we've seen that over the years and the use and how often you know I burn through keel strips on my personal boats um, you know dragging them on the beach and things like that so uh, it does work and this is why we take the extra step to spray on that last application of gel coat plus it's pretty quick uh, tip for those home home builders and uh, home do-it-yourself you know kite maintenance thing I use a high quality automotive uh, masking tape because it stands up to the solvents a lot of your stuff that you find in your Home Depot your Lowe's um, Menards whatever you have the big box home store will not stand up to the solvents of gel coat uh, or, or resin so that's why I use that the other thing too is I, I do what I call sequence in the tape so I start off with the first piece that I put on, I put a small pull tab on it, and then I run around the entire surface of it, and each tape, piece of the tape, overlaps the previous one so that when I pull it off, it pulls the tab on the next one and then the next one. So if everything works right, you can get 20 some feet of tape come off nice and cleanly in one pull, and that's what happened with the hull. So that's, uh, that's my pro tip for today. All right. Uh We've got a little bonus footage for you uh, on this one. Uh, this is going to be how we do our keel strip because this particular kayak does get a keel strip as part of the build, uh, so it's a factory installed keel strip. Um, so I have, you know, basically gone ahead and, and uh, cut a line down the center of the uh, the plastic film to uh, access the hull, and we're going to use that plastic film when we, you know, go back and tape everything up for the keel strip. So. You get to see how we do a keel strip. Um, first thing I've got to do, I've got to go back and cut a uh, cut the slot for the uh, skeg, uh, which I'll use a router for. Uh, since the box is already installed, I can perfectly get that edge nice and neat um, with the router versus trying to handsaw it without a multi-tool or something like that. Uh, and then we'll tape everything up for the keel strip. All right, so this is the part where I normally would be doing an outro sitting next to the boat that I'm working on, but uh, Leslie let me, let me know this morning that I screwed up and I didn't record it, uh, or at least it didn't get, uh, get put into our, our Google Drive. Uh, but anyway, so what you missed, and, and, and please uh, forgive me for that, is uh, me retaping the seam on the boat that I was working on, sanding it, and then respraying it. And truthfully, I wasn't going to film the spraying anyway because the overspray would get all over my nice iPhone, which I use all you know exclusively for filming these videos. And I really don't want to try to you know have to clean it with acetone or anything like that. So, but anyway, um, apologize. There was some, there were some technical difficulties in there as well uh, with the microphone. 
uh, hopefully that everything is uh, getting sorted out as far as that's concerned. So anyway, if you liked what you've seen, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified when we drop new videos. We do this on every Thursday um, and we want to drop some more videos. So some more stuff, more content is going to start coming out. Uh, I'd love for you to be, um, you know, be there as a subscriber uh, so that when we get this, this uh, exciting new stuff coming, um, out on YouTube land uh, that you'll be you'll know about it. So until next time, it's Joey, Turning Point Boatworks, and we'll see you next Thursday.